Tonight, it's an odd twist of fate that although Steve Earle is regarded by many musicians as one of the finest songwriters of his generation, he may be best known as an actor. Steve Earle came out of Texas in the 1970s. Since then, he has written and performed songs that range across country, rock, folk, bluegrass, and more. He's also written a novel, a play, and short stories, and right now he's working on a memoir, which we talked about when he performed at the State Theater in Portland. You've written short stories, you've written a play, you've written a novel, and now you're working on the memoir. I read that you really haven't found writing on the memoir all that f as fulfilling as the others because you don't like writing when you know what's coming next. Yeah, yeah it's hard. It's just, it's all me. You look, it's all writing about me, but, but I can at least fool myself into thinking I'm, I'm writing about somebody else and that it's more interesting than, it, than when I'm when it's unapologetically about me. A lot of people now don't even know you as a musician, they know you as an actor. Yeah. They know you from The Wire, they know you well, from Well, I'm, I'm more widely known from that role in The Wire um, than I am for anything else. And when it was almost over for me, and I was out there on them corners, not a pot to piss in, and anyone that ever knew me or loved me cussing my name, you know what I told myself? I said, Waylon, you're doing good. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, you know, for years. I was offered acting roles when I was way younger and way better looking, but I didn't, um, I hated when, to tell you the truth, when actors made records. So I just kind of didn't really have any interest in doing it. I didn't think I would be very good at it. And I just, uh, you know, got offered this role that it was playing a redneck recovering addict, so it didn't really require any acting, and I felt like I could maybe do it. So uh, it was a blast. It was like, uh, it's, the most important thing culturally I've been associated with, I think that's pretty safe to say. The Wire's a very big deal to a lot of people all over the world. So not too long after I moved to New York, it was probably 10 years ago, 11 years ago, <clears throat> I'm walking down the street and some, from across the street, a guy was think, I think it, I, I've never put it together completely, but I think he was driving the beer truck and he had just gotten out of that, you know, loading into one of those joints in the village. And he's going, hey, what's up, The Wire? You know, so, so I'm the wire. <laughs> you're not even a character. You're yeah, the entire series. The no, that's great. That's great. I'm the whole series now. You've had rough patches in your life, and you've, you've talked and written about them candidly. Uh, heroin addiction, short stint in jail, seven marriages. Are you surprised that you're even still around? Uh, sometimes I am, but, um, you know, I'm probably going to be more surprised when I'm not, you know, like everybody else. Um, you know, I say it all the time. I don't see the guy with the beard when I look in the mirror. I think I like love I see the guy, I see me when I'm 20. And it's a hard time for me to connect that I'm, you know, I still, you know, I, they, they've been sending me those cards in the mail for a long time, and I just throw them in the trash. Well, you know, I, I've still never, I've never gotten a discount in a movie. And it's all because I just don't want to think of myself as being old like anybody else is getting old. What do you think of the music scene these days? I don't. I don't, you know, know as much about it, and I don't claim to. Business has changed so much, and it's so much harder to get hurt, and everything's so diluted by all these different formats, you know, between the Internet and you know, satellite radio, all these things. It, the satellite radio itself, there's all those different channels and <clears throat> you're not gonna run into, um, you know, Buck Owens and, and, you know, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels and the Beatles all being played on one radio station, which is what I grew up with. A lot of lines on your resume, singer, songwriter, actor, playwright, novelist, soon to be memoirist and on and on. What do you still wanna do that you haven't done? Oh, God, I don't know, just a musical, you know, that's what I'm working on now, I'm working on a couple of them. So you'd love to have a show on Broadway. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's the goal right now. And that would be pretty cool. I would go see a Steve Earle show on Broadway. That would be very interesting. You know, it's interesting, we had the first part of our conversation with Steve Earle on 207 last night, and he talked about how when he was a kid growing up, he would watch Johnny Cash's variety show on TV, and he said it was the only place where you could see Bob Dylan. Well, in our conversation, he just happened to mention that he had played in 1989 at the ballpark in Old Orchard Beach with Bob Dylan. No kidding. He's got this extraordinary memory. I mean, to remember a show from, you know, three decades ago, for a guy like that who's done thousands of them, just like, just like that, and we said, oh yeah, I played with Bob Dylan at the ballpark in 1989. Just right out with the yep. date like that. Yeah, Just I don't even remember what I did yesterday. Trotted it right out. Although He's with Bob Dylan, you probably remember something That's a good like point. That. That's a, an excellent point. <laughs>